Lovett and our fifth grade math middle school extraordinaire, Tom Fredenberg. Um, this is our fifth or sixth um, session of the series. We started out with our head of school, Mark Reed, and our board chair talking about Country Day's approach to managing through this pandemic. We had some tips and tricks and tutorials from our um, educational technologists to go through the digital learning tools that our students are using during this time. We also had a special guest from Davidson College, the admissions office, join our very own Katie Alsasser in the College Counseling Office to talk about the impact that COVID-19 has had on the college process for our juniors, seniors, and seniors. Um, we've also went big picture with our remote learning kind of philosophy and survey results and how we're kind of continuous improving to meet the needs of our students with Joe Hernick and Scott Waybright. And just last week, we had our school counselors along with a couple uh, partners from Southeast Psych to talk about caring for our kids during these kind of challenging times. So you can go back at any time to our YouTube channel as well as our BucksNet website and look at archived conversations. And if you have any questions for any of the guests or the school, there's a big button. You can ask us and we will get you to the piece, people that you need to get to. Um, so as we've been saying in the past um, conversations that this is is a conversation that looks a little different now in this new normal. We're kind of talking to ourselves, but we want to know that you're here. So as you kind of log in, let us know your relationship to the school, say hello. Um, you know, it feels different than being in our conference room or in our library where we wish we could be together, but this is the next best thing. So say hello and let us know you're here. Um, so I'm going to just let you know the format of today. It's a little different than in the past. Um, I'm going to pass the reins over to Warren and Tom. They are, as if anybody knows them, um, this is probably not surprising the topic of today's conversation. So I think kind of a smile and um, kind of a feel good moment during this time is super needed. I have to say personally, as we've been going through Bucks together this week and our teacher appreciation, it has warmed my heart and has uh, totally warmed our, our community's heart, seeing all the love that our families have shared with our faculty and staff. So keep it coming and check BucksNet for there's like 50 or 60 updates so far and I've already got about 10 or 20 in my inbox. So keep them coming, it really means a lot. When we're not together on campus, let's do this virtual thing the Country Day way. Um, all right, I'm gonna go off screen now, pass it along to Warren and Tom. And again, let us know you're here. And if you have any questions for these two middle school gurus and humor gurus, um, just ask, ask away. They can see your comments and so can I. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Shannon. Uh, on behalf of Tom and me, we really appreciate you putting these together, not just for us, but for the others and for our Country Day community. Um, first, Tom and I would just want to say uh, we hope that everybody is healthy in your homes, that your loved ones are safe, your extended family is safe, and to the healthcare professionals um, and to those who are really day in and day out taking care of people who are sick, we simply want to say thank you. With that in mind, we are obviously during this pandemic in a very serious reality, and I have to start by just saying we are aware of that and by no means by doing this program are we diminishing the severity and the sobriety of uh, the the reality of the healthcare professionals and people who are sick we know it is serious and those of you who have been reading my weekly notes you know both of my older brothers are infectious disease doctors in new york city um, we know it's serious and yet there is this wonderful quality of humor. There is this powerful quality of humor. And I would maintain there is this healing quality of humor that Tom and I just wanted to share and explore together. And um, with the understanding that the audience is probably parents um, who are uh, navigating their children. And hopefully we can give some space, some uh, ideas, some perspective on how humor has been a part of who we are how it is, has helped us become not just the educators we are, but the people we are. And um, I was 
I'll turn it over to Tom in, uh, in just a second. Um, first, uh, when I reached out to Tom, I said, hey, you want to do a little program with me? I, um, he said, sure. And, uh, you know, those of you who know Tom, um, all I can say is there's much, much more to him than just being funny. To be sure, as you will discover if you don't know him, he is very funny. But, uh, you know, for instance, there are qualities to him that go beyond his humor. Now, there's a good picture. But, um, you know, for instance, he just put together a program video for the rising fifth grade because he thought it was the right thing to do. I didn't ask him. And he thought the fifth grade families and the fifth grade ch uh, rising fifth grade children would want that. For many years, he's been in the middle school and he still runs this lower school trip for fourth grade kids. Obviously not this year and fourth grade parents. He is beyond. He, there's more to him than being funny. But with that said, let me just um, tell uh, introduce you to Tom. Tom. Wow. No pressure or anything there. Uh, you know, it is funny, though, because some people like I try to be a goof, just a goofball, basically. And I say inappropriate. Not inappropriate. All right, they're probably oftentimes inappropriate, but um, I try to look at things from a perspective of just let's try to lighten it up. You know, let's not take it out of everything too seriously. Let's lighten it up a little bit. And I have found it to be pretty successful with kids in their learning experiences and also to kind of help parents if I'm dealing with some stressing, uh, stressful situations to just help them kind of see that it's not the end of the world. It's, it's going to be okay. We're, you know, everything is going to be okay. Um, so that's my kind of my perspective, if you will. I grew up like uh, once, I think you've mentioned earlier, I had 11 brothers and sisters in upstate New York. So um, you had to kind of find something that made you stand out or some way to get through all of the things that we get through when we're growing up anyways. But when you have 11 siblings, yeah, you got to find some humor in that. I mean, you got to look for stuff to laugh and you go cry. My, I can remember my mom a couple of times just standing over the stove and I'm like, dad, why is mom crying? Well, now I know she had 12 kids. Tell us about uh, going to a restaurant at camping when you went camping, Tom. So my, my mom and dad would try to do they we they tried to do the week awake with the family thing and that and so it just was a nightmare. It was worse than so we would do day trips like we would go to you know or sometimes we would overnight at places when we the, the kids were really young and we were pull up into a McDonald's and the manager says to my dad he's like you know you know I, I, next time you're gonna do this can you guys call ahead and let us know that you're bringing a bus full of kids in so we're prepared and my dad's like. It's just my family. I mean, it's, I didn't think to call ahead, but I, yeah, sure, you know, next time I'll call ahead. So that kind of stuff was just so funny to grow up with because people were like, wait, all of these, that, what? They're all yours? And, you know, we, we were the biggest. I don't, never met anybody with a bigger family. So let, let me fun. tell you a little something about middle school, the reality of it. And I, I, I have said this before. I am now, I now have students that I taught um, who are in their 50s. And I have said this before, and it's true. I have never met, and this is now year 37 going on, I've never met anyone who wants to come back to middle school. Not one person. Nobody ever says, you know, back to the future. Can I get into that, you know, instrument and go back to middle school? I want pimples. I want unreciprocated crushes. I want uh, menstruation. I want the lost loneliness. No one ever says that. And I say that, those of you who are listening who are parents, you, I don't, when I hire, I don't think you have to be funny. It's, it's a bonus. I think you have to have the ability to laugh at yourself. And I think you have to have the ability to laugh at situations. And I say that, and the pandemic, there's nothing funny right now. And yet there is something joyous about being with your family. And there is something joyous that you now have more time. Maybe there's more luxury with meals. Maybe there's gorgeous skies to enjoy in Carolina right now. There is joy. And you have to find the ability to get that sense that there is something special to uh, take advantage of right now. But, uh, you know, Tom and I come at our lives um, 
both in similar fashions and in different fashions. I think my humor emanates from growing up Jewish in Oklahoma City. And when I went to college in California, people would look at me and think, there's Jews in Oklahoma. I mean, it was, it was even funny to people that there would even be Jews in Oklahoma City. And then I'd give them the punchline that I went to a co-ed Episcopalian day school in Oklahoma City. And they're going, "What? why did your parents? All I can say is I grew up on the outside looking in. And I think the advantage for me anyway, it's the only thing I ever knew, was that you have keen observing skills. And I think the level of humor has something to do with um, the observation of what's going on and being able to play it. I mean, I'll give you a, for instance, if Shannon, if you'll bring up the note I sent to the fifth grade teachers. If you're there, Shannon. I guess, yeah. So Anna Healy is a fifth grade teacher, one of the best teachers in fifth grade. And she's so conscientious and she's so wonderful and she's very pregnant and her due date is in May, late May. And so this is, I don't know what day I sent it, it's some point in April when all the teachers are flaming out and being exhausted. So I sent out a note to everyone on the fifth grade team for signups on uh, days for Anna right after she delivers that she can do dinner. So again, I'm just trying, what I discovered is this with humor among adults working with faculties. The mindset is this, the, the, the punchline is we're trying to provide the very best education for children we possibly can. And a vehicle for that is if, if people are laughing and if people are having fun and if people want to be together, the, the hope is that the education for your children is at higher levels. So, okay, so I send this out in about 27 seconds later, take a look at what Tom writes back. Tom, can you just, as, can you read this, Tom, to people who are, I mean, how did you even, like, this is Tom, every day at school. Tom, what? I can can't you, see it. I think. I'm a simple man. I, I would like the following. <laughs> I can't see it because my computer screen's too small, but Pam, it just was, Pam, it was just Pam, nonsense. Pam was just, yeah. I, who thinks Very like this, Tom? I just set up very complicated, ridiculous dishes and then just said something like, um, no dessert, though. Thanks. Thanks so much. See you soon. You know, just just ridiculous. And if you've ever worked with Linda Wolf, if any of you guys remember Linda Wolf, she is one of the best people to have in your audience because she you can you can just just rail on her. And she'll laugh the whole time, and it just elevate. We're we all of us. Pat, we will be in the hallways of Ray Hall, in between laughing. Like Tamika and I used to be in the hallways, just laughing. The kids would look at us like, "That wow, the teachers aren't supposed to act like this." But we just would try to make it so fun, and we would just all it would just turn into some some ridiculous thing. And I really do think that the kids actually are are happier when they see adults laughing and you know trying to get through whatever it is we're getting through with joy and laughter, they, I think they really respond. Um, it's funny. It's just fun. It's fun to see how ridiculous you can. I, I feel like it's fun to see how ridiculous you can make something and just take it to an extreme. And to be sure, it's not all party time and it's not all laughter. And when there is joy that is shared with children, it shows, I think, in their education to Tom's point. So anyway, can you bring up uh, Michael Michael's piece that is sent? So Michael Reinhardt uh, coordinates all the, if you can just blow it up and take us off, Shannon. So Michael reports out every day on <laughs> which teachers are out because he has to coordinate all the coverage for the, the teachers. So then he has a little play here that um, knowing <laughs> that parents are going bonkers at home, of the call for can teachers go out and be the teachers out and so that's the play that he sends out in the morning and so you start your morning i'm thinking that's how humor works you move the needle a little bit so that perfect perspective can deepen so that you can be able to laugh at yourself and um 
and hopefully parents who are reading this, hopefully that's the thing, you never know, um, are laughing. Uh, that's the part about humor is that it's easier to know when you are kind of jesting if the person on the other end has the ability to laugh. I mean, I remember last year, I have no idea if Stephanie Temperman is on or not. And she is a parent at the middle school and happens to be the parent association head. I write a weekly note. I have no idea how many people are middle school watching or upper school watching or lower school watch. I have no idea what the audience is right now. But um, so I write a weekly note. Those of you in middle school know that whether you read it or not, I don't know. Upper school who've traveled through know that reality. Lower school, not so much. So I write a note and then buried within the note um, um, is that Stephanie's taken a new job, uh, first school in uh, North Carolina, that there will be a Kvetch coordinator. And so, well, you know, first of all, I hope Stephanie's got a sense of humor. I think she's got a sense of humor. Um, but, you know, all of a sudden there are these emails wondering, you know, do you, first of all, what does Kvetch mean? Um, it's Yiddish for complaining, but do you really have that? And do we go there when, you know, you have some questions? And so it's not just the faculty. And so I still think that the community, when one is able to laugh, one's healthier. And so that's, that's the idea. And so um, let me just show you a couple other uh, photographs. Can you just um, show the Greek mask one for us, Shannon? Um, this, those of you who've read my weekly notes over the years, know that I'm not all party time and not all humor. I mean, there's certainly some real tough stuff that has unfolded in my life as a kid. And I think the Greeks absolutely have a portrait that makes sense to me anyway, which is along with, you know, the hurt in a life. And I think this is where I think it plays in to the pandemic. There is also joy and that there is also laughter. And it is not all one versus the other that they have a relationship with each other, an ongoing relationship. And I think that's where the Greek playwrights with both tragedy and comedy understood each other. And I think that is at the heart of what we're trying to do this morning for folks who are trying to think about it. And um, so let me, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a, for instance, if you'll put the one up of me, uh, Shannon. Well, Tom, why don't you go ahead and I'll stop talking. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to say, say when the other piece that is interesting and Warren brought it up a little bit, touched on it was the participation. So like if if there's a if there's like a, a little poke, a nudge to get if he sends out something or somebody sends out something and you have a reaction and people start participating, it just it makes it better. So for instance, the other day Warren said, Hey, next um next um faculty meeting, which was Monday, we're going to do a Kentucky Derby hat contest. Okay. So everybody just, so literally almost everybody gets on. And this was my ridiculous Kentucky Derby hat, which actually won. It's got a little unicorn because I couldn't find a horse and it's just stupid, but everybody did it. And it was just everyone scrolling through and writing comments, and and, and it, it just made it funny. I mean, everyone will, will talk about this stupid, ridiculous hat for a couple of days, and you know, it, and laugh. And that's one of the things I think that is is cool about the atmosphere, if you will, at middle school under Warren's leadership. Is that he encouraged, like, if he wants you to do your job, like that's that's non negotiable, but he also wants you to enjoy your job and he provides opportunities. If you want to participate, some people, you know, are very serious. They don't like it, but it's fun when you get everyone like Halloween is just dumb, but everyone dresses up. Most everyone dresses up that wants to. And we just laugh because it's just funny. Um, can you put up the uh, picture of Tom again at Halloween, Shannon? Mm. That's, That's not Christmas. Halloween. That's Christmas. <laughs> That's Halloween. <laughs> that was, I'm a wizard, not the dolphin. Um, Shannon, do you mind putting a picture up of uh, on the motorcycle?
<laughs> so, you know, here's, I've never ridden a motorcycle in my life, but um, R.C. Deer is a wonderful math teacher and also a very, very funny person. In fact, I, the, I've never been in a math department where laughter is part of the package as it is at Country Day in middle school. It's, um, it, it goes, it goes. But anyway, on the one hand, it's very serious. R.C.'s dad, he starts this uh, prostate cancer research in honor of his dad who is enduring prostate cancer. And um, he starts this and unfortunately, R.C.'s dad died. And then R.C. creates this incredible spirit in middle school where there is a beard-a-thon and there's a competition of who has the best beard. And so anyway, I'm playing Peter Fonda, easy rider there, but, um, but there it is. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not, the culture is that it flows elsewhere. It doesn't just resonate where I am. And so there RC is taking this moment in time of having to travel and navigate with his dad and creates this space where literally thousands of dollars have been raised to honor people who have endured prostate cancer. And we have these beard of thons and sometimes the kids win, which is the most fun is when they have the pencil thin mustache um, and win the, the beard a thon. But uh, anyway, that's kind of, Tom, you want to enter in? Yeah, I've never ever grown a beard or mustache before at middle school, um, no shave November, and I hate it. And yet every year, come November 1st, I don't shave and we raise money. And it's, again, part of that idea of participation and just being, you know, the, it, the kids love, they get so into it. They, they bring in their coins and they throw them in our buckets. And it's, it's amazing how you can turn something that's tragic into something, something good and, and have fun doing it. That's what's the cool piece. RC I mean, is, is funny. Our math meetings are so fun. We laugh. They're, they're so, I think Michael Reinhardt, who used to be science, when he first came over, he was like, these meetings are different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had math teachers in school that I think were trained in the Soviet Union. And, you know, there was no laughter. They might have been in Romania, for all I know. <laughs> but there, there was no, you know, there was no joy in Mudville. Let me put it that way. So to the parents, you know, you're sitting at home and you, you're seeing kind of how our mindset flows and how it uh, moves. But I think, you know, to encourage your children, you go crazy every day. How many times can you walk the dog in the same walk? Well, I mean, and yet it's kind of, if you can turn it, it's kind of funny. Um, and your kids are watching you. And we are all under stress right now. And if at any level you can find a rhythm or a space where you can model how it is to be able to laugh at this experience of raising <clears throat> and being at home and doing your best, and maybe the dinner is not so great, and maybe, you know, who knows how it's all playing out in your homes, but just having that ability to laugh, um, I think it can carry you not just now, but I think post pandemic, I think it'll serve us all well to have that space where there is this joy and memory that as tough as it was, there was connection and laughter too. Tom, do you wanna mention anything? No, that, that, that's exactly it. It's just, I, I, like I said, I just try to find the, it's something ridiculous or absurd and just try to run with it and make it turn into something funny that you can just say, all right, you know what? It's the worst. It's this is the worst day ever today. And then try to say, okay, we, we recognize that. Well, let's try to move on. Let's just find something that brings joy, something funny. And I'm sometimes just reading. I, I saw um, this, I don't know what it was on, who knows, but it was on one of those sites like Facebook or something, but it, it was a car and on the window on the side, the mother had written, you lied to me. My kid is not a joy to teach or something like that. <laughs> and it's just, she's like, and I was like, that's funny. That's, that's, because that's, that's gotta be one of the first comments that a teacher makes first of the year. Your child is a joy to teach. It's funny. So stuff like that, you just look for the absurd funny stuff and it just makes makes the day better 
In my hey opinion. Tom, just out of curiosity, when did your when did you when did your mom know you were going to be a teacher? She still can't believe it. <laughs> she she literally she she did she never in a million years thought I would do this. I, I was t I was the teachers liked me in school but hated me in class. They were like, I like you as a person, but oh man, I just wish you would just stop, you know, and let because I was that kid. I was that kid that I think that's why I empathize with them so much when they say, Oh, you're getting so and so next year, you better watch out. And I ended up loving the kid. And yeah, they're, you know, they're challenged, but they're funny. If if they're funny, they gotta be funny. But um, yeah, I, my, my I don't think she ever thought I'd be a teacher. Not in a million years. <laughs> she's just like, she's. Shannon, do you have any questions that you want to ask of us? I'll come back up here. Ooh. Hi, I'm back. Great. That was hilarious. I've been laughing down there. And I don't know if you're seeing everybody on the side kind of saying thank you. I will say there may be some um, hungry people after reading your um, request, <laughs> Tom. So <laughs> well, I don't know if we could expand that um, meals list. You know, I was thinking, I would love to ask if both of you could share, I didn't prep them on this, so if you need a second, um, just like what's a funny, how did a student unexpectedly make you laugh? in your however many years combined experience that right. you could share with us. I'll start with a story. And I just happened to see this guy in my second year of teaching in Oklahoma City. His name is Todd Nafee. He is in his 50s right now. He's selling life insurance. I was um, very, you know, wanting to make sure I was driving home good points. I was teaching eighth grade U.S. history. And I was talking about Thomas Jefferson and the Declaration of Independence and the just the jarring reality of here is a person writing the Declaration of Independence who owns slaves. And how does that play out? And I think I'm making this really point. I'm looking out into the children. We have a horseshoe shape. And I see, I, you know, I don't usually get Todd's attention. And I get Todd and he's, you know, raising his hand. I'm just so, I feel like I've turned the corner with him. I just, I just, you know, it's that feeling you get as a teacher. And he goes, Mr. Stepwitz, he said, Todd, you know, great. What, yeah, give me your insight. He says, oh, no. Your socks don't match. And I remember Wait, back, thinking, back, back up. Person, you if you don't have the ability, my socks didn't match. Yeah, I was good. Yeah, I was gonna say, Ward, you you froze for a second, but the so his he raised his hand just to tell you that his socks. Well, anyway, are he's, he's very animated. He, this is a child who's never animated in class. I'm making the point about the hypocrisy of Jefferson. I think for my twenty whatever year old brain, I'm thinking it's a pretty solid entry point. Here's a guy in the audience who doesn't ever talk. He is an athlete, big guy. And I'm thinking, I got him. I finally got this guy entered in, and he's going, Mr. Stokes, he said, the socks don't match. That's awesome. And he was right. My At that point in my life, my socks didn't match. But um, <laughs> that's more of school. That's and good. you have to be able to understand what's important to you is not always what's important to them. <laughs> what's important to them is time with their buddies, trying to figure out their identity work vis-a-vis -vis their parents, vis-a-vis -vis their sibs, um, figuring out who they are. And they will do school, but why they're oftentimes at school, in middle school anyway, are for reasons that are not necessarily your most important reality. So that's the one that popped in my mind. I, I had one a couple years ago, and it's this girl that I just love. I won't say her name. And she, uh, I, I used to, when, before she was born, I knew her dad from the Y. I used to work out. I was in shape. And I, as I've gotten older, I'm just, you know, I'm an old man. Whatever. And uh, she, I was complaining one day. Of course, I, I just have my moments. And I was like, oh, I just hate myself. I'm so fat. I got to get in the gym. I just look terrible. I'm old. I hate this. Uh. And she goes, Mr. your friend. You're in shape. And I said, thank you. She goes, round is a shape. <laughs> um, but I was like, 
I just started laughing. I was just like, I go. Absolutely. That's hilarious. I think keeping perspective during this time um, when we're all spending a lot of quality time with our kids um, is very good to keep in mind. I will say, I don't know if I want to, um, if anybody is out there and needs a joke or a, a an idea, not going to say just email Warren and Tom, but I'm sure they have a few that they could share. So make sure you're watching and reading Warren's emails because I wouldn't be surprised if there's one snuck in there, here or there. I always love um, kind of catching them down in the bottom of the emails, the unexpected um, pieces of humor uh, to keep things in perspective. So I will say, um, Michelle, it's great to see that Grayson is on and watching. So it's kind of fun to know. Hey, I, I wonder how homeschooling's going with her. <laughs> yeah, Michelle, let us know. How's it going? Two thumbs up. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Kelsey Smith says, I have so many funny stories from middle school. I think we all do. If anybody wants to share a funny story, feel free. Again, this is kind of conversations. It is a little different for us to kind of be talking and just looking at ourselves and not you all. But knowing that so many of you guys have tuned in to kind of have a smile on this Wednesday with a few more weeks left of school, um, we really appreciate it. So if anybody has any questions. Yeah. As, yeah. as we're queuing up questions, do you mind putting up the one I sent from April 1st last year? Yeah. So you can just put that on the screen. So last year, I do a, a weekly note to those of you who are not middle school parents. And as you might remember, there uh, were college admissions realities unfolding. And so, um, you know, this year, because of the pandemic, I chose not to go into an April Fool's uh, letter. But anyway, when you think about humor, all, oftentimes what folks try to do anyway is just move the needle a little bit. So obviously, Tom and I, anytime we can go after Linda Wolf, who's the former teacher at the Good Day in the office, because she's got a wonderful sense of humor. But all I tried to do is showcase how absurd it was that there were people across the country who were trying to, you know, nail the system to get their kids in by, you know, really not good ways. And so I just picked faculty members and I picked their college and I picked something absurd. <laughs> and in any time I can get the illusion on any joke, it's always a good day. And so there's Tara with them. And, um, but again, the read this year was I didn't go that direction during two weeks after we closed school. So anything else emerge, Shannon? Yeah. Anything else? I do see Stephanie Tipperman was on. So oh, I don't know she was. Okay. Um, well, hopefully she'll still talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly. Um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, let us know. Tom and Warren, um, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you guys are slammed trying to meet our students' needs and our faculty needs during this time. It all looks so different. Tom, I was interested in you telling me earlier just how much more time it takes to be as personal um, with all of your students. So I can't imagine, but I know all of us, all the parents are saying thank you. And thank you, Warren, for keeping our, your faculty ready to, to kind of meet these challenges and do what they need to do in middle school for our students. Um, well, thank, so, you, thank you, Shannon, for hosting. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, of you. Thanks, guys. And now, okay. Warren, no, um, no pressure, but we're definitely looking for some sort of joke to, uh, in Monday's email. <laughs> Well, I might defer to Tom on that. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. Um, so everybody, whether you're watching now or you're watching later, please um, know that you can go back to our YouTube channel as well as our Bucksnet website for all of our archive leadership live sessions. We're going to have a handful more from now through the end of May, focusing in on seniors, community, and some smaller group things um, in terms of transitions. We have, this is the end of the year, Year, and those transitions, even though we're remote, are still happening. So stay tuned to our social media channels and our website. 
and Warren's emails for upcoming events. Um, we hope that everyone is staying safe, um, enjoying this good weather, and don't forget to say thank you to your teachers this week for teacher appreciation. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. See you, Tom. See you, Shannon. See you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in.